Sandflies and mosquitoes blanketed Meave's face and neck. She did not bother to brush them away. She'd been in Angren long enough to know more would come in their place. Your Majesty. Raynard called from behind. Our scouts have returned. We've a large force of blackclads on our tail. Infantry and horsemen. And they draw nearer. Blast! Meave wiped away the sweaty hair stuck to her brow. What say you, Raynard? Shall we give them a fight? We were a few miles from the river where a barge awaits. It makes no sense to battle now. Though near her strength's end, Meave stepped up her pace. She could not wait to stand upon a barge deck and leave Angren's infernal bogs behind. Alas, in place of the promised vessel, they found only severed moorings. No! No, it can't be! Suddenly, Meave drove her fist into the trunk of the nearest tree. Fortunately, a soft and rotted one. This isn't so! Your Grace, I... have mercy. I stepped away, but for a spell... Croaked a scout. Pale as a ghost. And thieves jumped out the underbrush. Fell upon it. Whole band of them. A white hair warrior. A minstrel. And alas, what had a bore. <laughs> well, is that all? Interrupted Gascon. No vampire sat upon an ass with no saddle. You cocked up, man. Damn it. Meave, what now? The queen turned back towards the swamp. Between the trees, she glimpsed a golden sun glimmering upon a banner. We shall discuss that later, said the queen, drawing her sword. Provided we survive. Everyone, rally to me! Drive them back! Your Grace, that was but their vanguard. Near the battle's end, Meave faced a black-clad officer. Nimbly dodging his strike, she countered. The Queen's sword sank deep, the hilt rattling his breastplate. A rush of hot blood covered Meave's hands. The winged helmet toppled from the officer's head, exposing a sweaty face, gasping for breath. Mean! Uh, win! Before the Queen stood a ruddy-haired boy with long eyelashes. He was Willem's age, perhaps a bit older. His body slumped, then disappeared beneath the malodorous foam atop the murky waters. Meave cast away her sword as if it had burned her hand. Majesty, what is it? Are you hurt? Raynard said, rushing to her side. No, I'm not. It's fine. Give the order to march. With no barge, we must walk to Red Lobinden along the riverbank. Your Majesty. We must tend to the wounded. Use the rest of the day, I wager. We ain't time enough for that, interjected Gascon. That was but the vanguard sent in pursuit to slow us down. And even so, they outnumbered us two to one. What happens when the main force arrives? We must flee. Now. And abandon the injured, to bleed to death in the mud. Alas, Reynard, yes. Unless you'd rather we stayed and died with them. Reynard. To lead with honor, not cold self-concern. This I would always choose if I could. Your Majesty, I beg you. But Gascon reasons soundly. We leave immediately or we risk death for all. And all we've done up to this point, the battles we've waged, the blood we've spilt, would be for nothing. This I can't allow. Your Majesty, my objection I voiced. What you do now, you do in your own name. Yes, of course. But understand. It's not a decision I make easily. The soldiers accepted Meave's choice in silence. And for the first time, she saw loathing in their eyes. Yet she did not waver. The wounded would be left behind. All hoped the Nilfgaardians would treat the injured with honor as prisoners of war. Not drown them like runty animals. The force marched off moments later. With none burdened by injury, their pace was swift. The distance to the pursuing foe grew. The queen rode at the column's fore, her shoulders hunched, her eyes downcast. Gascon is right. Should Nilfgaard close the distance between us, we'll stand little chance. Whew. At least you've the sense to... But I would sooner perish than let my men rot in this accursed swamp. The medics will tend to all the wounded. Then... 
What will be, will be. I tell you what will be, snarled Gascon. Ep die, he'll take a butcher's hook and gut you. Then hang you from Lyria Capital's walls. Yet, yeah, if this be your wish... Neve waited for the medics to sew the last stitch, tie off the last bandage. Only then did she order her force to move out. At the column's end, upon stretchers, lay those without the strength to walk, consumed by fever, dazed or unconscious, dying. Fatigued and laden with the wounded, the Lyrians moved slow as molasses. Soon, Nilfgaard's forward elements had caught up. The blackclads nipped at the Lyrians' tail with arrow volleys from the cover of trees and occasional forays by cavalry. They were in no hurry. They could torment their foes, weaken their spirit before the final clash. <laughs>